No, you son of a bitch. <laughs> you hit present. Uh -huh. So I'll help you get started, and then you can advance the slides with the mouse there. Cool. You don't have to reach over. Hello, I'm Josh. I'm experimenting with multiple genres. Um, I just, I'm experimenting and creating in as many genres as possible uh, because I could never be satisfied with only one. Uh, and I wanted to challenge myself by doing things I've never done before. Um, it didn't work. Uh, layering vocals and sax. Um, I did Duke of Earl by Gene Chandler. I had Marcus play sax, and I layered uh, all the vocals. I did Don't Worry Baby by the Beach Boys. Um, it's really hard being the performer and the engineer because I was just running back and forth between the studios. Um, but uh, I also created songs with like playlists of music. Um, I love the idea of cramming an entire playlist into a couple minutes. You can get people to listen to music uh, that they may never listen to, and uh, they can hear music the way that you hear it. Um, I use like Fela Kuti. Um, that Latin jazz one is really good. If you get like compilation albums, they're they're perfect to sample from. Um, here's a an example. do next for the next month I'm building a website to concentrate my work and uh, after I might go to grad school at NYU maybe I don't know though um, yeah this is and this is just a bunch of other a bunch of the other albums I used uh, the sample from um, what are we, where are we at sure. 20 more seconds oh you can also dance but that's about that's about it. Thank you very much. Thanks. What's up? What's that? What is that? How do you do that? Do you mind if I sit? Sure, that's easier. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just click on that. Okay, that's easier from my point of view. And then we're going to click on present. Okay, uh, for my project, I made an application in Max that you can use in the practice room. And I did this because uh, I took a class last semester on Max programming. I got really interested in it, and I also... Uh, I spend a lot of my time in the practice room and I thought it'd be a nice thing to have and something cool to show you guys. Uh, I essentially, I consolidated all the things you would use like in a practice session into one 
software, so you know, metronomes. Uh, I use drones, because I think rather than tuning with a tuner, you should use your ears to tune. Uh, I used uh, a video recorder. I think that was actually where this like whole idea started, because I think it's super important to like record yourself and listen back and actually see what you're doing. Um, this is uh, a little screenshot of what it looks like, and I'll have a video running through all the stuff here in a second, but I'll talk through it first. Uh, my drones, I use organ drones that like have multiple octaves, so you know if you're playing up high, you can hear high pitches too. If you're playing down low, you can hear the low pitches too, so you have all that. Uh, there's an option to tune it to A440 or A4042, and I tend to add other things if you want to tune to A436 for some reason. Uh, the keyboard, you can just click on the keyboard to get also play the drums rather than clicking on the notes, or you can use a MIDI keyboard. You can plug it in. Uh, there's a metronome, uh, really straightforward. There's an alarm clock, which was an idea we had from early in the semester when we were talking about productivity. So in the first row of the alarm clock, you can set how long, it'll count down from what you set. So say you set it to seven minutes, it'll count down, and then it'll set an alarm, and you know, okay, I just spent seven minutes on whatever I was just practicing. Then you can start it again and do seven minutes of something else, so it's a good like workflow tool to stay productive. Uh, the notepad was an idea I got from Dr. Willie just to like keep notes on your practice. Uh, and then the audio video recording, which is a pretty self-explanatory. I, uh, for mine, I just use the webcam on my Mac to record, but you can totally hook up a nice camera if you want better video quality. And uh, you could hook up a microphone or whatever you want. Um, this is like the settings page, so you can see you can change to A440. Over here is like the volume of each thing, so you can kind of mix it. Like if the sound of the alarm clock is too loud, you can bring it down, or the drones is too loud in the metro. Uh, the ADC is where you would change, like if you're using the computer's mic or like an external microphone. And yeah, pretty self explanatory. And I got the organ drones from this website. Uh, so here's a video of me just running through everything. So here are the drones first. And you can also use the keyboard. And then the metronome, you can just use the mouse to go up or down to change the BPM. The alarm clock counts down from whatever you set, so I put it at 10 seconds here. And then the little circle will turn off the alarm once it starts. <laughs> Just a little oscillator, yeah, it's pretty simple. <laughs> You just save it wherever you want to save it, and then you can pull it up and it saves it as a text file. The video, for some reason, you save the video before you record it, which is really weird. I'll show you in a sec. This turns on your, your webcam. Okay. You can do that, sure. Definitely. Cool. Um, should I pre-open my audio file? It's a... Uh, don't look. <laughs> you saw nothing. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I did I did my project over immersive audio. You guys have heard me talk about it here and there. And then so I was gonna try and do binaural or something along those lines. Um, ultimately, I didn't like the sound quality. So actually, you know what? I'm just gonna go to the next page. So what was my goal? <laughs> my goal was to create recordings that made the listener feel like they were like sitting in the middle of a quartet 
or of a jazz combo or something along those lines. I wanted it to be like very, like literally felt like you were plopped right in the middle of it. Um, and I wanted to use like some different uh, mic arrays and do something a bit different miking wise because it's like, I know how to mic a whole jazz combo and mix a whole jazz combo, I've done that before. I wanted to kind of use this as an opportunity to maybe try something that's a, bit old, a little bit less conventional and see what results you can get with it. But at the same time, I did still want, I did, I did still want sound that sounded both really good on headphones, which was the really cool like binaural side that kind of stayed in there, and that still sounded really good through speakers. Um, and yeah, so compromise as little as possible. This is what I ended up using as far as a miking array. So you still kind of have the binaural influence right there, where you have those space left, right, hard panned microphones. And then that center one just does exactly what a center mic you would think it would do. It dials in whoever you're placing in the center. The, the sessions became really kind of interesting and that's why I ended up going with this different style because essentially what would happen is I would show up, get the array set up, listen to them playing initially while I'm just like mic, like line checking. And then I would start placing them in the room where my head says like, okay, I think this would go good here. And this is all kind of just done based off of where I think they would sound good and how I think it would envelop the sound space really well, go listen. And then I would set kind of everybody's distances from the arrays to set their volume in the mix as well to like pre-balance the mix. Um, this is an example. It's the best picture that I had, but so you can kind of see um, the girl in the middle had most of the melody. The two people on the side both played together at points, so I went ahead and split them so that when they came in together, you still got their piece kind of coming in in some ways as a center, but you could still hear the unique differences. Cello kind of sits in the back. Um, and so then what we ended up getting with that is this really cool, it all sounds really natural in my opinion. Um, it sounds really full, it's really versatile, and it didn't really compromise anything on sound quality, but you still get this really big sound stage out of it. So here's that quartet. So as you can see, the name of my project, I entitled Big Cox Drums. And for this, it's just a custom drum sample library that I made. Um, and so like I said, it's a drum sample library. Um, the idea was to get samples that fit multiple genres. Uh, I wanted to start the project out originally with experimenting with drum replacement, um, which is still something I'm very interested in. But then I kind of got carried away with making a lot of drum samples. And I got um, just more fascinated by the creativity part of the process. Um, and also in my project, I have uh, two snares that were hand built by Colin Kolb. So these are un very unique to my project because you're not gonna find those drums anywhere else because they're one of a kind. And I also included those raw files of Colin's snares and drums and everything. So you guys, anybody can do whatever they want with it. Uh, why I chose to do this is because I was kind of concerned that when I graduate, I might not have the proper space to record drums right away. Um, because one of the most important parts is the room, um, a treated room, high ceilings, because to get those overhead or overheads array set up right, they need to be up pretty high because when you listen to a drum, you don't listen to it right next to your ear. Um, generally, you're listening to it from um, a distance. Um, solid preamps was a really important thing because if I use my preamps on my little Scarlett interface at home, they're pretty weak sounding. Um, and to get really solid samples, that just wasn't going to happen. 
Uh, I also need quality microphones because I really wanted to, I did a mid side overhead array for my entire project. Um, and I don't have the proper microphones at home right now to do a mid side overhead array. And the reason I chose mid side is because that gives you um, a big variety of options when mixing uh, because you can do just the mid overhead and you can also bring in the sides to make that sound a lot more spacious to capture the ambience of the room. And an experienced drummer with a quality drum set was also um, a big reason I wanted to do this while I had access to drummers here at Ball State with you know, their own drum kit because if I was recording on a really crummy set, it would be really crummy samples. Um, and so then my project has two sample packs. There's the Big Cox drum kit, which is more towards EDM, hip hop, um, multiple genres. And there's the Colby Smack drum kit, which is all Collins kit. And that's a more natural sounding drum, drum kit. And um, I'm gonna make everything available for a free download for anybody that wants to use it for whatever they wanna do. Um, so the first drum kit is the Big Cox drum kit. And I recorded two snares and I turned those two snares into 15 different snare drums. Um, and I also didn't have a kick at the time we recorded, so I made this unique kick sound from a floor tom um, by adjusting the attack and the decay, lowering the pitch and that kind of stuff. And I also included some just various special effects that I made from the drum, so take a listen to these real fast. Apparently not. Forgot I made those private. And coming soon is going to be the free download. Um, the rest of my project, I'm going to work on compacting these into zip files, um, which is going to be really quick. I'm going to make them for available for a free download on my website. So anybody can use them, pass them along. And I'm just going to work on promoting it, advertising it to anybody that wants to use it for free. good okay so for my project I did a collaborative jazz EP it's gonna be called for a rainy day um, the purpose of this was to showcase everything I've learned here at Ball State whether that be uh, my recording mixing mastering um, I have an acoustic jazz song on there where I'm playing trumpet improvising uh, and then I have a sampled piece where I recorded a sample and or a bunch of samples and made a piece out of that. Then I had another piece where I designed, um, I used sound design to make the piece had uh, Deron Jackson rap on it, play trumpet on that too. So, um, how do you go? To, oh, you just click on it. Okay, so the first piece I did was called October. Um, this right here shows you, uh, I was using um, Alchemy to design my own sounds, kind of mess with the ARP and the effects. Um, this one was, or, oh, also all of these pieces are based off of jazz standards that I reimagined into different pieces. So this one was based off of, um, from Charlie Brown, um, Halloween, the great pumpkin waltz. And I kind of reimagined it into a different piece, um, using various effects. And I can show you the just basis of the piece. So all those signs or sounds I designed, uh, also experimented with like a like triplet uh, swing delay, which kind of helped the feel of the drum beat. Um, the next piece I did, oh shoot, I can't even see this thing. Um, the next piece I did was more of an interlude. So for this one, so I wouldn't have any issues with the sampling, I recorded um, one of the jazz pianists here playing um, with my own mics. 
So it was my own sample. Um, and then I took my trumpet from the last piece, layered it on top of each other and chopped it up and then used pitch shift to make my own chords out of that. So I'll just play a little snippet from this. previous piece and I just um, as I said I used pitch shift to change that around I don't know why that sounds so compressed on here oh, thank you. yeah cool <laughs> Colin couldn't be here with us he's uh, with singers so he made us this video my project is uh, preparing a career as a drummer. So uh, my project was to build a portfolio to sell myself to future employers for music. Uh, I wanted to build something I can give to clients to show off my versatility in music and my ability to record and produce music. So the first step into uh, moving on with this project was uh, uh, finding all the projects I've been a part of, you know, pretty much locating everything. First looked for uh, completed albums, uh, and then I looked for recorded recitals and concerts. I achieved this by contacting every person I knew that recorded me or I played with for a project that was recorded. Uh, this included either live recordings or studio work. The second step was recording new material uh, that I haven't had recordings of me playing yet. As I said, I want to feature my uh, versatility as a drummer and musician and some genres that I haven't recorded yet. So I had a old uh, drum set book with a bunch of play alongs and um, uh, I used that for um, my uh, play alongs pretty much. These play alongs were perfect as uh, they, they uh, the quality of the, the backing tracks are actually pretty good. Uh, they're not very cheesy sounding. And uh, so I went into the studio with uh, obviously some microphones here on the left picture and uh, played along to them, recorded it. And then on the right, I am mixing and mastering it at my house. And then, uh, yes, and let's look at the next step. So the final step was actually building the portfolio. Um, and what I wanted to do for this was a website. Um, so for this website, I had to buy a domain and logo. Um, I uploaded audio files, pictures, and videos of myself playing on this website. Also on this website, you can find projects that I've recorded. So if you go to the link on Canvas, you can see the whole video. Uh, let's see. He's not even here, and he spent more time in like this presentation than walking from. Yeah, no, it's he it went over three minutes, so I'm just gonna play the. All right, so what I did for my final project is um, I took some bad recordings that my band did way back in the day, high school and whatnot, and decided to uh, fix them up. So I decided that I would do three different types of uh, mix. The first one was everything, trying to make everything sound good, um, not really throw anything away, you know. The snare, I had to put some distortion on it to get some high end and stuff. The overheads were horrible, had to EQ the hell out of them, um, stuff like that. But overall, it you know, I managed to get a good sound out of it. And that's this one. This is before and after. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Turn it back up. Yeah. Okay. So this is just the before and after. Yeah, that's that one. Um, the second one was taking out the stuff that I that just wasn't good enough. So for this song in particular, it was the snare. It um, 
and uh, the high end of the kick drum I replaced. The low end of the kick drum was fine, but there was no attack, so I replaced that. Um, I did pretty much the same thing with the uh, uh, with a lot of the rest of the mix, but I did some auto-tune on the vocals and stuff, a lot of editing, basically to just polish it up. Um, yeah, uh, the guitars for both of these, actually, I uh, I didn't like the, the sound that I was getting, so I put a low pass on it and then put some harmonic distortion on it and then ran that through an, uh, an amp simulator to effectively reamp it. And I thought it sounded really good. It goes well with the bass. Here's another before and after. Um, and then this one was uh, accepting the imperfection. This this session was really something. In fact, I'm just going to play you this. Uh, this is the snare track, mind you. <laughs> um, yeah, some nice compression on there that I could not go that I could not make go away. So I kind of embraced the the fact that this is garbage and made it hot garbage, and. Um, added, you know, distortion, over-compressed some things, whatnot, and made this before and after, by the way. So the moral of the story is if there's a will, there's a way, and, uh, yeah, it's positive. <laughs> How long was that? That was three minutes. So what I did for my project was I just kind of went back to a lot of the, the, the sounds that I I tried to create back in the day. Like I've, I've been producing like since I was maybe 15 and I just had a lot of samples and a lot of things I wanted to go back and rework. So, so sort of the background to this project was just kind of like, in, in, like in incorporating all of my influences. And I named it just show, show enough just because like I remember like back in the day, me and my cousin used to watch this movie called Enter the, the Last Dragon and this character was just like so glowing and so like out there and that, that I really liked them. And uh, yeah, some of the inspiration, just uh, inspiration of uh, sampling the grooves, the melodies, the culture and the balance. I used a Native Instruments MK Groove Machine and Logic Pro X and some of the samples I used were In My View by uh, Young Fathers. Uh, this was an Indian sample. I cannot say that for the life of me at all. But um, Pleasure by Special Things and Four Tops, I just can't get you out of my head. Uh, and here are some two, here are two tracks. Father is kind of like a distorted African beat, I would say. So.
we'll be trying to rework some some more stuff and just kind of uh, adding adding in some layers later on. And that'll be it. Thank you. Okay, so I kind of named my project Double Trouble because I'm mixing the music department. I'm a double major here, um, vocal performance and music media production. My first idea was to create a songwriting class with the Prism Project, but there was a lot of issues within the first like three weeks with planning. So I had to reevaluate my whole idea and redevise my project. Um, and after talking to Dr. Willie, I decided to combine my senior recital, which is taking place on April 27th at 7.30 in Han Hall, and my MMP capstone together. So the idea is to record my entire recital. It'll be about 50 minutes with an intermission um, with a bunch of different pieces. I'm doing a WC set. Um, I'm doing a Argento set with um, the guitar and Dr. Riley's gonna play the guitar for me. Um, and then I have a couple arias and different things um, representative of all the four languages. So this is my hand drawn stage plot um, that kind of represents what I'm gonna be doing that day. So I'm leaving the overheads, but I am gonna change them and I'm gonna use um, the Shep CMC6 after testing a couple different overhead pairs. These were the best sounding ones that I found. Um, and then the X's are me varied in different positions because we do move as singers with the U87 on the floor with the null pointing to the floor so I can um, do any rejection for the reflections off the walls and the floor and things like that. Um, the box is the guitar with the TLM 103. Um, same thing, rejection off the floor. And then the grand piano with a KSM 141 inside the half stick. Um, probably just a simple AB array. Microphones. Um, I have my dress rehearsal that week, so the plan is Theron's going to help me kind of set up and do some checks and levels, so we're going to record from up here um, in Studio a, or Studio 1, um, and probably set up a couple hours before, check the levels, uh, make sure everything sounds good, um, obviously change the day of, and then I'm setting up my mics from 12 to 2 that day, and I have to strike because there's three more recitals happening before mine on the 27th, so... We'll do that, change the overheads, um, and then strike the mics, and then hopefully have a good sounding recording. And then my finished projects will be a clean mix of my recital that I plan to do during finals week, and just mix and master that, and then hopefully um, have clean recordings that I can send to competition places, um, schools, or any type of audition that I might need these recordings for, and then possibly put it on a CD. And that is it, it's my project. Is that? that is a Saturday. Okay. Hello, I did my project on effect pedals and circuits and how they're used in recordings and um, I bought this pedal from um, a website and it was just a kit with a bunch of parts and I put it together and soldered it and it really helped me figure out how these work internally. Um, over here on the left this is what my pedal is and what the three different knobs are and then the chip inside that's running the delay is the P22399. And then for my bigger presentation I'll talk more in depth about what actually goes on inside but for now I'm just going to talk about how I built it and what it sounds like. Um, so this is all the resistors in it, and then the top chip, that's the delay chip, and then the ball, the small bottom one, that is a dual op amp. This shows some of the capacitors I put in, and then over here, this is a transistor, which helps regulate the voltage going into the chip, because it gets powered by 9 volts, but the chip only takes 5 volts, so it helps regulate that. Um, this is the underside where I actually soldered all the components in. As you can see, they have really long legs that I could stick through, solder on, and then just trim off the extras. Uh, this was my workspace right outside where I built this. Um, and this has all the capacitors 
are all the film and cap capacitors and then the last aluminum electrolyte capacitor. And this is the finished board. And then I wired it to the inside of the hardware, which looks like this. And I just soldered all the wires in. And that's what it looks like if you take the back of the case off, all soldered in. And I have some samples. Um, this first one is an AB, what it sounds like bypass, and then I'll show you what it sounds like with the signal. And then with the signal. And then with all of them at 10, I mess with the delay knob, which makes this effect. And that's just changing the delay time of the signal. And here's just some other samples. And this next one shows if the delay is at zero or the repeat is at zero, it just repeats it one time. Um, and the delay is at 10, which is about a second long. And then the, when the delay is at zero, it makes a really flutter sound when the repeat's all the way up. And the last video I have is all the knobs at basically 10. But yeah, for my bigger presentation, I plan on actually arranging something bigger and making a long piece. So, thank you. Um, so for my capstone project, I went with the title for What's Your Story? Interpreting Music Through Visual and Oral Storytelling. And um, some background for it, I was inspired by this, by my final project I did for computer music in Dr. Swilly's class. And I was fascinated by how um, music and game soundtracks have evolved over time. Like they can help um, evoke emotions and like drive the story further along the work, the storyline without the need for words and so the title of the piece is called um, Codename the Final Phase and it's compiled of recorded sounds that I did through the use of different um, plugin editing so I used Spear, Absinthe, Alchemy, and Cecilia and then I did all the editing in Logic and um, this is my own personal interpretation and mine was a narrative, so I had a story in mind as I was making it. And so mine was basically how um, aliens were coming to Earth and they're trying to let out their companions in the scientific facility and then take over the world through the use of mind control by taking over the minds of the head um, facilitators in the site. And one of the collaborations I did was with a dance major, Shannon Swift, and, oh, this sounds so sweet. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go back. Oh. Um, so hers, she recorded it in the uh, racquetball um, places at Worthen Arena, and her concept was she felt like she was locked in a room with cameras beaming down at her. So there are two camera perspectives, one front on and then one above. And she put emphasis on um, different head movements and slow movements to like symbolize her mind getting taken over. And oh, I wish it would play. And another collaboration was with um, Jala and she is a um, art and animation major. 
and her animation style was described as sketchy and gritty and so here's some concept art from her animatic that she made and um, the one on the left is of the main character um, and then I think that's like on the spaceship and then on the right are some examples of what the aliens would look like. And then the last one I did was with Sarah and she's an astronomy major and she made a space show and um, she showed me this huge space library where there are different catastrophic events. Like there was like a black hole and then like the sun eating the earth, like different things like that. And you will see that in the bigger presentation. But um, like an overall reflection was that um, like it was really cool having three collaborators to like interpret my music in three different ways because it made me see like how like their own like creative minds worked and um it was cool to like bounce off different ideas off of each other too yeah. and when's that going to be in the planetarium uh, april 20th and i'm not sure on the time yet she so i'm not sure what that time is so April 20th, it'll be in the planetarium with the computer music concert. I think it's our first computer music concert in the planetarium, so it's a Thursday night. Hello. So um, my project was an original EP of four songs uh, called On My Mind. DOI Jukebox is my artist name, you know, for like SoundCloud and stuff. So this uh, EP is a song cycle. It's four songs, uh, each representative of the different stages of a relationship and how um, relationships can feel very cyclical before you've found the right person or decided what you want to do. Um, so to make this feel as one cohesive piece and not four disparate songs, I interwove different themes uh, and had them all blend to uh, crossfade almost between the songs, uh, and even the last song to the first song, so that you could start the EP at any point and have a cohesive story no matter what. So I have here a um, collection of just the main motif showing up in each of the songs. So this is the chorus from the first song. theme shows up in each of them. So it shows up in the guitar part during the bridge of the second song, Evergreen. And I It shows up behind the chorus of the third song, Don't Fade Away. And then uh, finally it shows up in the bridge of the fourth song, Sorry. So yeah, that's not the only thing I did. There are a couple other themes, a couple other motifs that show up less frequently um, and represent different things. I'll probably talk about that more in my big presentation. And finally, it's up on SoundCloud if you want to listen to it. Um, here's a way to access it, tinyurl.com slash onmymindep. Yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs> Uh, you and anybody who wants future MMP students, people want to get ideas for projects.
don't know what that is. Okay. Right. Okay, so uh, my presentation for this semester um, is called Musical Alchemy. It's actually a play on words. The band I'm working with is called, they call themselves Blue Alchemy. And alchemy is like the study of like mixing together like chemistry and potions and stuff. So I thought that was like a cool thing. But um, what I did was I reworked my old MMP 430 project and as well as um, I added two more songs. So I have eight songs in total. Um, and the reason I did this was because I felt like I didn't utilize my time and resources for um, the project last semester in MMP 430. And I really wanted to give um, the band and this album like the best possible um, outcome that they could possibly have because they are great musicians. Um, I started with, um, I just completely erased everything that I did on the first six tracks and just started completely over, gave myself a clean slate. And I took what I learned from redoing all of those and applied that to the two new songs to record um, so that uh, I could really hone in on that and not have to spend so much time on the new ones. And what I want to do going forward is I want to make them a website um, and have like different pages dedicated to the band and its members and uh, the creation of the album because this is something that's like really personal to them and they like the the main uh, the lead vocalist Don he writes all the songs and he just goes all out for these and he's uh, he puts a lot of like thought into everything and I just really want to give them like a place where they can describe everything. And then I have here a preview of the song Think of You. Um, this is a song that they originally were going to get rid of. Um, this is the demonic penguin I was talking about. <laughs>